Hi! In this video I show you how I created this massive enclosed ecosystem with lots of different plants and animals. It all starts with this empty wine bottle that holds about 25 to 30 liter. You can see the very narrow opening. So first I created a funnel out of a plastic bottle. This way it was much easier to add these clay balls as a drainage layer. Excess water can build up and it helps aerating the soil which is important to avoid the formation of anaerobic spots in the soil that could produce toxic gases. This can easily happen in an environment with high humidity, such as a closed terrarium. Using my trusty stick I evened out the layer of clay balls. I also put a layer of lava gravel on top. It were just some leftovers. But plants also like rooting in it, due to its high surface area. Many terrarium builders place window screen mesh on top of the drainage layer, to prevent the substrate from falling into it. But I don't like using artificial plastic stuff in my builds, so I am using aqua soil. Due to its smaller grain size, it separates the drainage and substrate layers. It is also rich in nutrients without introducing too much organic matter that breaks down quickly. So it's perfect for the plants and a closed system. Now it is time for the main substrate. Therefore I made a mixture of sphagnum moss, lava gravel, normal aquarium gravel, orchid bark, cocoa chips, cocoa core and worm castings. With a little bit of water we achieve an extremely fluffy mixture that holds a lot of moisture, is well draining, has some nutrients in form of the worm castings and breaks down very slowly. A lot of it goes into the bottle. Since the stick didn't reach the sides of the bottle I attached a piece of wire to it, which made it much easier to distribute the substrate evenly. I made sure to raise the substrate in the back to create an effect of depth and to create a digging spot for the animals I want to add. Now the terrarium is ready for planting. I prepared the plants for several weeks in jars or in plastic bags to prepare them for the conditions in the bottle. If they survive the high humidity in the back, they will definitely survive in the bottle. Normally you would add the larger plants first and then place smaller ones around them. But because of the narrow opening I have to do it the other way around. So I added a lot of moss first. I bought some of it online and a few species are from my parents garden. The stick is extremely helpful in placing the plants into the right spot. I also added a few aquatic plants like this dwarf hairgrass. After I finished the edge of the bottle, it is time for the hardscape. I decided to add cork oak sticks. They barely fit in the bottle, but I think they look very nice in there. Cork bark is often used in terrariums, as it won't start molding and breaks down extremely slowly. Animals also like to hide underneath it, due to the high humidity. Now it is time for even more plants. I am a big fan of moss and ferns, if you haven't noticed already, so I added a lot of those. I removed the substrate from the larger plants and separated them into a few individual plants. 
This is a method you can use on many different types of plants, especially ferns. To plant them in the bottle, I cut the roots and dug a small hole in the substrate. The root cutting isn't a problem for the plants. It even stimulates new growth. I did the exact same thing with this larger fern and placed it right next to the syngonium in the middle. This is an alocasia, a plant that has quite large leaves, so I planted it in the background. Because it looked a bit empty and I like to cover the entire substrate with plants, I added even more. Now it is time for some water. Spraying the glass walls of the spray bottle helps cleaning the glass, which I then did with a paper towel. Now it is time for the first inhabitants, springtails, which I got from my springtail culture. Don't worry, I picked up the ones that fell next to the bottle. Here they are on the leaves. They are a very effective cleanup crew and will eat dead leaves and any decaying parts of plants and thus support a stable ecosystem. This is how the finished terrarium looks like now. At the beginning I said I would add multiple species of plants and animals in the terrarium. I present to you the Dwarf White Isopod, another very effective member of the cleanup crew. I have waited for some time to make sure everything is fine and they won't die in the terrarium. They need calcium for their shells, so I added some crushed seashells. I also added a few crushed leaves for them to eat, as the plants were still very healthy and therefore wouldn't be enough food for the isopods. They came inside these little test tubes that are filled completely into the bottle. One of the isopod was stuck on his back on a leaf, but I was able to help him with some water from my spray bottle. A lot of time has now passed and the ecosystem looks extremely healthy. Many of the plants have grown a lot. Even the moss grew quite a bit vertically, which indicates low light, but I think it looks awesome. Only the big fern in the middle died a few weeks ago, but it is now coming back to life. The glass is actually pretty dirty now due to algae, moss and other stuff. So I got these aquarium magnet cleaners that are made for bowls and will hopefully work with this shape too. A little water helped cleaning the glass which actually works perfectly. The glass is now much cleaner. Since the dwarf hair grass grew quite a lot, I added another type of aquarium grass to this build. Now it is time to close this terrarium once and for all. To make it completely airtight, I placed some plastic kitchen wrap over the opening and placed the lid on top. And 
here you have it, a functioning, self-sustaining ecosystem. The plants will use the nutrients from the poop of all the different organisms to grow even bigger. Old and dying leaves are eaten by the spring tiles and isopods. If they die, they become fertilizer for the plants. As an additional part of the food web, we got these little guys. Predatory mites that probably feed on the springtails. I didn't introduce them intentionally. They probably hitchhiked on the plants. They will keep the number of springtails under control to prevent overpopulation and thus the outcompeting of the isopods. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.